The Biden administration said Thursday it has information that some 8,000 North Korean soldiers are now in Russia's Kursk region near Ukraine's border and preparing to help the Kremlin fight against Ukrainian troops. In a dramatic moment during a UN Security Council meeting, the deputy U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Robert Wood, asked for more time to add to earlier comments condemning the increasing military cooperation between Russia and North Korea. We just received some information, just coming in now, that right now there are some 8,000 DPRK soldiers in Kursk Oblast, Wood said, using the acronym for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea. Kursk is a region that Ukrainian forces took by surprise in August. And I have a very respectful question for my Russian colleague, does Russia still maintain that there are no DPRK troops in Russia? That's my only question and final point, he said. The Russian representative at the council meeting, which Russia called to discuss international peace and security, did not respond to the comment and the session was adjourned. After 980 days of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, in violation of the UN Charter, with all the death and destruction Russia has caused, Russia is today falsely trying to blame others for its war and for Putin's obstinance. Russia started this war. Russia could end it tomorrow. Until it does, Ukraine has an inherent right to defend itself, and the international community can and must ensure Ukraine's borders are not redrawn by force. As I've said many times, Russia's disinformation fools no one. The real issue is not international support for Ukraine's defense. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine is the victim. For Russia, war means conquest. For Ukraine, survival. The issue today is Russia's unlawful aggression against Ukraine and the countries that are dangerously fueling it. It is not hard to miss the irony of Russia calling this meeting just as 10,000 soldiers from the DPRK deploy in Russia to train and potentially join Russian forces against Ukraine. We heard yesterday the international community's serious concerns Russia may be planning to use DPRK soldiers against Ukrainian forces. We caution Russia not to make such a dangerous miscalculation. DPRK participation in combat against Ukraine would be an alarming expansion of the conflict. Already, the DPRK's troop deployment in Russia marks a dangerous expansion in Russian DPRK ties. Russia's actions with respect to the DPRK are not only dangerous, but they are antithetical to its responsibility as a permanent member of this UN Security Council. Russia's military cooperation with the DPRK violates multiple UN Security Council resolutions, which prohibit both procuring DPRK arms and providing military training. Specifically, Russia's training of DPRK soldiers involving arms or related materiel violates UN Security Council resolutions 1718, 1874, and 2270. We condemn in the strongest possible terms the path the Kremlin is taking with the DPRK. Moscow has shown the same contempt for this institution when it violated other UN Security Council resolutions by deepening military ties with Tehran. Iran has supplied the Kremlin with armed drones as well as close-range ballistic missiles, undermining the security of Europe as well as the Middle East. Meanwhile, China continues to downplay its large-scale support for Russia's defense industrial base, providing materials key to Russia's defense production, including weapons components, UAV and cruise missile technology, machine tools, microelectronics, and nitrocellulose. PRC-based companies have even collaborated with Russian defense firms to design and produce long-range attack drones. China cannot credibly claim to be a voice for peace when it enables Russia to wage the largest war in Europe in decades. China's support to Russia is decisive. China's support is prolonging the war. 
China talks about creating conditions for peace. But China could quickly create those conditions by suspending the support to Russia. And I want to be clear, it is not our intention to vilify or smear China. These are facts. Uh, I'm not going to respond to my Chinese colleague. I think I've been very clear. Uh, we just received uh, some information just coming in minutes ago that indicates that there are right now 8,000 DPRK soldiers in Kursk Oblast. And I have a very respectful question uh, for my Russian colleague. Uh, does Russia still maintain that there are no DPRK troops in Russia? That's my only question and my final point. Thank you. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said Wednesday that North Korean troops wearing Russian uniforms and carrying Russian equipment are moving to the Kursk region near Ukraine, in what he called a dangerous and destabilizing move. Austin was speaking at a press conference with South Korean Defense Minister Kim Yong-hyun, as concerns grow about Pyongyang's deployment of as many as 11,000 troops to Russia. He said officials are discussing what to do about the deployment. Austin said the U.S. remains concerned that Russia will use the North Korean troops in combat, but whether they will be employed in the fight is yet to be seen. Kim said he doesn't necessarily believe the deployment will trigger war on the peninsula, but could increase security threats between the two nations. There is a high possibility that Pyongyang would ask for higher technologies in exchange for its troop deployment, such as in nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities, he said, speaking through an interpreter. Seoul and its allies assess that the number of North Korean troops now dispatched in Russia has increased to 11,000, according to a senior South Korean presidential official, who spoke on condition of anonymity during a background briefing. More than 3,000 of them are believed to have moved toward combat zones in western Russia, the official said, without specifying the locations. Some North Korean advance units of those troops have already arrived in Kursk, where Ukraine has successfully held territory after a surprise counter-incursion in August. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here today, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce... Now, we're closely tracking the unprecedented level of direct military cooperation between Russia and the DPRK. In our meetings today, we shared de our deep concerns about the deployment of DPRK troops to Russia. We also discuss how we're going to work together with our allies and partners to respond to this dangerous and destabilizing escalation. The evidence now suggests that North Korea has sent around 10,000 soldiers to train in eastern Russia. And some of these DPRK troops have already moved closer to Ukraine, and we're seeing them outfitted with Russian uniforms and provided with Russian equipment. And I am increasingly concerned that the Kremlin plans to use these North Korean soldiers to support Russia's combat operations in, in Russia's Kursk region near the border with Ukraine. And let me rem remind you that Russia signed onto the UN Security Council resolutions agreeing not to provide military assistance to North Korea. Of course, we know that Putin has gone tin cupping to get weapons from the DPRK and Iran. Turning to a pariah state like North Korea for troops just underscores how much trouble he is in. And we take this very seriously. We urge the Kremlin to change course we fully understand the security implications for both Europe and the Indo-Pacific. Putin will not prevail in Ukraine, even with, with more help from North Korea. Thank you.